Matty Graham here from Exponential Performance Coaching. Welcome back to another Whiteboard Wednesday. Today we're tackling the question that I got from a viewer about music and training. Should you chuck those earphones in when you're heading out for a training session? Well, let's take a look. So I got this question about listening to music while training. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Should you do it? Should you avoid it? So let's take a look at some of the positive and some of the negative things around music and training so that you can be a little bit better informed about when you choose to pull out the iPod and plug in those headphones. So some of the positives, looking at the research here, it shows that when people listen to music when they're exercising, they have a decrease in RPE, which is rating of perceived exertion. So for a given intensity, when you listen to music, it feels easier. It feels easier at a given intensity compared to not listening to it. So decreased RPE, and we've probably all felt that when we're running along, riding, whatever it is, we've got our headphones in, good song on, we don't feel as we're working as hard as compared to when we're slogging away listening to our breathing and it all hurts. It's been shown that cycling performance is increased with fast paced music. Fast paced music. So something that's a bit upbeat, up tempo. And the ideal range that I've found for tempo is 120 to 140 beats per minute for the music. So choosing songs around that 120, 140 beats per minute is ideal if you want to look at it, prove your cycling performance. If you're not too sure, if you're not musical like I am, uh, and you have no idea what 120, 140 beats per minute, just Google it, 120 beats per minute song. What does that sound like? Motivation, getting in that mental zone, psyching yourself up for a hard training session. Now this is nothing new. If you think back to ancient times, what did they do before they went into war to battle, to psych their soldiers up? They had drums beating, boom, boom, boom. Having that that mental stimulation, we have songs that, we, that are linked to past events, to past emotions, and playing those songs instantly brings back those mental effects. You get endorphin releases, you get catecholamines, your adrenaline, your noradrenaline, your stress hormones all get released just from listening to specific songs. No doubt you've got one of those pump up songs that as soon as you put it in, it's just bang, battle stations ready to go. So it can be really good, say if you're training in the afternoon, you're getting tired, chuck a song on that you know is going to pump yourself up so you can get out there and train hard. And it's also really good on those long sessions to ease boredom, okay? If you're out there for a long session by yourself or on the wind trainer inside, treadmill, whatever it is, Chucking those earphones in can be a really good way of just getting through the session. Let's take a look at some of the negatives though, because it's sounding pretty good. Safety is a big one for me. If you're riding your bike on, out on the road and you've got earphones in, you cannot hear what's happening around you, okay? You cannot hear, especially if you've got the music cranked up for this motivation. You know, it's a, it's a really loud, pumping song, whatever it is, you can't hear. Okay, so if you're out riding on the road, be careful. Also, females running. Often see females running, uh, you know, through the trails, and they have no idea what's going on around them, okay? So just from a safety point of view, even males, I'm guessing, but females are more vulnerable. You know, be safe out there. Be safe out there. Dissociation. This is getting back to the science thing after my little parental rant. Dissociation. When you listen to music, this is why your RPE goes down, is you dissociate what's happening in your body. You, you sort of ignore it. So one thing I really like athletes to do is learn to listen to their body. What does your breathing sound like? What do your footsteps feel like? How does that feel? How does it sound? If you've got this blaring music in your ears, you dissociate all of that, which is great for a while, but you don't learn that skill of listening to your body. So while it's good, it's also a little negative if you use it all the time. And 
especially if you have a race coming up and you're training specifically for a race and the race doesn't allow the use of, move, uh, of music. Because if you've been training for that race and you've had all this music going and then you come to race day, the race organiser says, no, not allowed, to, not allowed your iPod, then all of a sudden you've got to listen to all these body signals that are coming at you. You're not used to them because you've been dissociating this whole time and your whole game plan goes out the window. So music, definitely use it sometimes. If you're feeling a little bit under the weather, not overly motivated, definitely use it. Long sessions, definitely use it to, to ease boredom if you want. If you're doing one of those hard sessions, that's all about listening to that body, developing that mental toughness, race specifics, leave the music at home. I hope that helps, that's music and training. If you've got any more questions about this or anything else, please let me know. Make sure you subscribe, hit the subscribe button now. You're going to get all the instant notifications of all of my upcoming videos and training tips. Jump over to Facebook, find me on Facebook. Everything gets posted there and also follow me on Twitter so you don't miss out on any of the exciting smart training resources that I'm currently pushing out. Get out there, train hard, but most importantly, train smart.